In a previous video, uh, we introduced the following linear transformation, t equals r cubed to r squared, given by the following rule, t of x1, x2, x3 is equal to x1 plus 2x2 in the first entry, x3 minus 3x2 in the second entry. We've shown that this is a linear transformation. We've also computed the kernel of this linear transformation. In this video, I want to consider the image the image of this transformation t. What is the image, right? Um, and so one could approach this basically by asking the following question, you know, uh, is, you know, let, let's let us, let's take a specific vector here. Let b be the vector one, two, all right? And so if, if b is the vector one, two, we could ask, is the vector b inside of the image of t? Is this specific vector inside the image? Hmm. Well, how would, how would one actually make such a decision here? So if so, what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve the equation t of x equals b uh, for some x. Can we find a vector x that when you plug it inside of t, you'll get out the vector b? Can b come out of this transformation? Well, what is t of x? t of x is this formula right here. You're going to get x1 plus 2x2, you're going to get x3 minus 3x2, and this is supposed to equal b, which is specifically 1 and 2. Now, we considered a similar type problem here when we were considering the kernel of the map, right? The only way that two vectors could equal is that component by component, they are the same entry, right? So the first components have to equal. x1 plus 2x2 has to equal 1. x1 plus 2x2 has to equal one. And the second component has to also equal each other on the left and the right. So x3 minus uh, 3x2 has to equal two. And so then we get x3 minus 3x2 is equal to two. And so you look at those two equations, just like we did with the kernel, we see that this is a linear system. It's, it's a non-homogeneous system, as opposed with the kernel, which was homogeneous, but we can still solve it nonetheless. We could solve this using elimination. Last time we did substitution. I think I'm gonna do substitution again, because when we did it with the kernel, we found there was a free variable in this system of equations. We're gonna see that's also the case as well. If you solve this by substitution, let's solve for x1 in the first equation and x3 in the second equation. We are gonna get that x1 is equal to one minus two x2, and we're gonna get that x3 is equal to two plus three x2. And so in this, again, in this situation, we see that x2 can be treated as an independent variable. And the x1, x3, these are dependent variables in terms of solving the system of linear equations, which tells us that we can choose whatever we want. We could choose whatever we want for t. You know, let, let's just do something simple, right? x2, we can pick any number we want, t. Let's just make our lives easier. Let's pick it to be zero. Um, if you choose x2 to be 0, that means x1 will be 1, and x3 will be 2. All right, this is just a specific example, right? Uh, but let's look what happens to the transformation when you do that. t of 1, 0, 2. Uh, by the formula, you get, you're going to get 1 plus 2 times 0, and 2 minus 3 times 0, like so. And oh yeah, you just get one, two again, that's great. And what was so special about the number one, two, or the vector one, two, right? We could have done maybe some arbitrary vector, right? Um, what, if, what if B just had the form B1, B2? Well, in retrospect, we can see with this transformation here, it's like, you know, I could always just set X2 to be zero. Like if you had just some generic vector over here, like B1, B2, you could always just set X equals two to be zero, in which case that would kind of tell you that X1 should equal B1, and x3 should equal b3. And so what have we learned here? First of all, we have learned that the vector 1, 2 is in fact inside the image of t. So the answer to that question was yes. But we also learned along the way that for any vector, right? So for all vectors b inside of the, inside of the codomain r squared here, for any vector b here, we saw that t of t of b1, 0, b2 will equal b1, b2 
which is our vector b. So we've also now computed that the image, the image of this transformation is all of R2. Every vector in the codomain is actually hit by this function because you can just kind of basically ignore the second component if you want to. Now you don't have to ignore the component. You could also get away with setting um, x2 to be one or two or three or pi, if you really are feeling exotic, it doesn't matter. But we can actually get any vector coming out of this, out of this transformation. And so that tells us that the image of this function is all, all vectors in R2. And this technique, of course, can be generalized to any linear transformation. We can compute the image of any transformation using these techniques. We can decide, is this vector inside the image of this transformation? It comes down to solving systems of equations. It's kind of interesting here that these questions about the linear transformation boil down to solving linear transformations. It ain't a quinky dink. It's called linear algebra. And we'll, again, of course, talk some more about this in the future.